I see you shaking your head, Brianna, at the idea that I guess I think the wording was from Claudia all agreeing about a genocide happening and you, you shook your head. I'm guessing you don't agree with that. I, I you know, I know this is probably going to be an unpopular opinion. I think it's a conventional war. I don't think it's a genocide. I think there's you think it's a conventional yeah. war where they're they're flattening I, a civilian center. With, I with would have enemies. loved a spit take from Claudia. She took a drink right as that was being said, and I we almost got a spit take. The reason these a conventional war, one side's in tunnels. <laughs> numbers keep getting revised down. I think there's a reason that the number of women and children killed was you know shot so far up, and now this been retracted. You know, over it hasn't and been retracted. It hasn't you stupid been retracted. bitch! It's, it's you fucking evil, evil, evil bitch. What an evil person. Why would she think it was retracted? What, what, what could she possibly be drawing on? Okay, so uh, I can tell you because I, I have fake Facebook accounts in a bunch of different places. And so you kind of get to hear these shitheads talk. Uh, the UN changed its number of oh, confirmed it's deaths. Yeah, 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 I know it's this. And they revised it down because since they couldn't have... They, they, they had reported the number of deaths and Israel had gotten on their shit as with APAC and a bunch of others. Hey, you know, that's not confirmed. We just don't know where those people are. They may have decided to go for a, a walk and you don't know that. And so they're missing. And even though Palestine says they're dead and also, by the way, Israel has the same numbers. <laughs> Israel uses the same numbers. Uh, UN can't. So the UN says, oh, these people are dead. This is only the confirmed numbers. And so everyone, oh, they revised the numbers down because they're uh, pieces of shit. Narrative that's out there, Al Shifa Hospital being a great example that people are out there making wild claims and then you look into it after the fact and it's not true. Brianna, have, have, has she looked at like a picture of a Gazan city? Like it's kind of amazing anyone's alive at all. Like they're they're leveled. Like, like as far as the eye can see, it looks like fallout. I, I guarantee you. I guarantee you she sees those images and presumes that's what it looked like before because she hates brown people. Actually, that's plausible. I hadn't thought of that. I, ha I actually hadn't thought of that. That's probably what she See, thinks it looks like. You're, you, need to learn, you need to learn to uh, underestimate her more. <laughs> you, of all people, need to realize she's actually worse than you thought. But I'm willing to put all of that aside because I'm not oh. a fan of Netanyahu. I think this war is disproportionate. Oh. I don't think it's helping. Look, guys, look, guys, I may have defended every single thing Netanyahu has done virulently for the past year, but I'm not really a fan of Netanyahu. So it's OK, right? Look, guys, I really thought Hitler went really overboard with France. All right. I still I still look, I still think the the, the, the Nazis were, were, were just like, what, what is the what is the I, I hate this. And ultimately, my goal is not to help Israel, it's to help the United States. I know what you can't see is that the Jews that have been the backbone of the progressive movement, the Jews that have been there for Me Too and Black Lives Matter and wrote big checks and helped gay marriage get funded and have been there every step of the way. That is a weird sentence. They are furious and they are hurt and the way you're talking gonna... about, well, hold on no the no. way you're talking about bowman yes 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 it begins is like apac came in and spent a bunch of money and then stole democracy and yeah yeah, yeah basically because yeah, they did that that's the thing they did oh this is this is another good one like these faces it's just everything is perfect need to tell you that is not true. I was in New York last weekend, and the reality is Bowman... That's not true. I was in New York last weekend. You know, there's this crazy little invention, Brownie. You might not be aware of it. It's called the internet. Everybody's seen what Bowman said everywhere. You don't need to be physically there to hear what he said. Said many things, including denying... I also don't believe he, she was present for like a Bowman rally or something where she heard any of this, she heard it online. Rapes of October 7th that I found disgusting and a lot of Jewish people found disgusting. And it was people power showing up to hold him accountable and get out there mm -mm. and mobilize the vote and win. And the way nope. you're talking about this makes it sound like Jews don't count. And it's just... 
Phrasing, Brianna. Phrasing. Oof. She's... She, oh, that's another really good face, though, isn't it? She is... It's an AI face, 100% at this point. She's farther gone than Biden is. Like, dear God. Like, just, just, she's a train wreck. Not true. If we are serious about building people power, if you're... Like, hang on, like, what, what did she just say here? Like, listen to this. This makes it sound like Jews don't kill. Like, what? Don't count. Count. It's but she didn't, but she didn't say count. Listen. The way you're talking about this makes it sound like Jews don't kill. And it's oh, she did say count. She just pronounced it kill. I need to turn these subtitles yeah, she just, off. She just has no ability to speak. So I thought it was an odd case of the subtitles actually tracking. Just okay. not true. If we are serious about building people power, if your theory that we don't need money and we need people is true. That's not my theory. We've got That's not my theory. We've got to go rebuild that trust with Jewish people. We've got to revisit the bread and butter politics with women. We've got to revisit and rebuild the coalition from the group. What does that mean? The bread and butter politics with women. Can you explain that to me? Is that, a, is that a phrase that I'm not familiar with? She's just a useless piece of shit. Just awful. Round up because it is disintegrating from this cannibalism and this sanctimony. Brianna, you're asked, you're you're literally in your argument, you are affirming that the big checks come from the Jewish community. That's the first thing. That's what you've been saying. And yeah, that's that's what I that's what like was sh that's what stuck in my head. I was like, really? Me too. Yeah, she's just basically agreeing with them because she's too stupid to understand she shouldn't. I want to clarify this. I'm not saying that movements don't need funding. What I am saying is that the funding determines the politics. And that is Hold very on a sec. Important. Let me just I'm jump not... in because I think but, I misunderstood but... something. I, I, I just want to make before we get past it. You, you said, Claudia, that Brianna said big checks come from the Jewish community. Did you say I or mean, imply that? I didn't. I, I just I didn't certainly... hear. Oh, you fucking asshole. I, mean, I, missed it. I, I did thing. not. I said I told you he's like people Wick. from the Jewish community got organized and went out there to work that race. And I was part no, of it. No, Actually, she, she literally explicitly said that. Let's go back and mobilize the vote and win. And the way you're talking about this makes it sound like Jews don't kill. And it's just not true. If we are serious about building people power, if your theory that we don't need money and we need people is true. That's not my theory. We've got That's not my theory. To, we've got to go rebuild that trust with Jewish people. We've got to revisit the bread and butter politics with women. We've got to revisit and rebuild the coalition from the ground up because it is disintegrating from this cannibalism and this sanctimony. Brian wait, 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 hang on. I was, I was further back. Genocide happening and you, you, you know, shot so far up and now this been retracted, you know, over and over. I don't think it's helping Israeli security. And ultimately, my goal is not to help Israel, it's to help the United States. I know what you can't see is that the Jews that have been the backbone of Here the progressive is. movement, the Jews that have been there for Me Too and Black Lives Matter and wrote big checks and helped gay marriage get funded and have been there every step of the way, they are furious and they are hurt and the way you're talking gonna, about, hold on no the way you're no. talking about, there was a statement and you could go back to the tape and verify it there was a statement that was made in terms of the big checks and how the jewish community necessarily feels betrayed like jewish people are a big that. part of the progressive movement they always have been. and all i have and all i have to say is that i know that they have been jewish people like many other people have Earthful. been part of many movements not only here in the united states but all across the globe wherever they are they are those progressive conscious like many other different identities nationalities have been there and what i am trying to say and what i am saying and i and i'm, I'm going to go back to this question of essence there is a difference in your perspective and mine we have different politics and so while i understand the point in terms of many Jewish people feeling a sense of betrayal that does not in any way erase the fact that there are so many other people that feel betrayed as well. You talked about here in the United States and the Black Lives Matter movement, well, the Black Lives Matter movement didn't solve the issue 
of police brutality. It hasn't solved it. In fact, the Democratic Party pumped in more money into policing last year than they did before. And the historic numbers of police brutality increased in 2023 under Biden. And so, <coughs> again, I don't deny the involvement, the engagement of Jewish people. I mean, there's Jewish Voices for Peace. There's many different organizations at the ground doing real work in relationship to what's happening in the world, not solely around Palestine. And that is valid. However, to say that somehow this would economically also impact the support and the growing of a movement, that's kind of like, it makes me feel a certain type of way. Yes, fundraising is important, but where it's coming from is important. I don't think APAC, my, my honest opinion, I don't think APAC is necessarily the representation of the Jewish community. I don't believe that. Um, yep. Okay, there's a lot there. So, <laughs> um, Brianna, do you think Jewish Voices for Peace is the representation of the Jewish community? Because that's, that's another group Claudia mentioned. I, I'm not Jewish. I can't say for sure. What I can say- You can just, we, what were you we just saying before then? You were just, you were just declaring on their behalf that they feel betrayed. And they're they're all like not being progressive anymore. Say is when I go visit, you know, when I go to Temple or I talk to my Jewish friends that are progressive. By the way, right here in Massachusetts, we had the eighth highest number of Jews. Uh, I can say they don't feel that. Is, that is Brianna really Wood Jewish? No, God no. Then why is she go to when I go to Temple? Is not a phrase you use if you're not Jewish. I think she would. I think she would like you to conflate those though i think she's like i don't know like she, she she had the biggest female game dev team in history brooks like oh yeah, yeah. Presents them, and I think uh, if you look at the leadership, it's not a lot of Jewish people there. So I don't. I mean, know listen, if, uh, I'll, I'll, I was not going to interject anything of mine here, but just sure. because this is, but... seems relevant, I'll mention as a Jewish progressive myself, I don't feel represented by Jewish Voices for Peace nor by APAC. Yeah. Uh, and I'll just I'll tell you a couple anecdotes in the last few years that have made me as someone who has been part of this movement for a long time feel like, whoa, do they want me in this movement? Number yeah. one was around the time of the women's march and the the some some of the statements that came out about Jewish women aren't intersectional or oppressed enough to be on the leadership of women's march as a Jewish progressive myself I thought whoa hold on a second so do they even want do they want my help I don't know cuz this is a group that I this is a movement I've been supporting for a long time and I recently went to a pride parade uh, it was pride month as a straight sure. ally myself uh, and there was a float in the parade I went to that was a uh, queers for Palestine, which is fine. And they had these puppets that were the stereotypical Jewish long nose money grubbing thing. And I said, holy crap, I can't think of a bigger straight ally for the LGBTQ. Was that a real thing? Like, is that a thing that I uh, pride? That'd be a hell of a thing to make up. That's not true. I'm just curious. Puppets. I feel like I would I've have heard a... about this. That sounds like a scandal. I feel like I would have seen something like that. That's like the kind of thing they jump on. Like it's and it's I mean, I would, too. It's horrifying if that's the case. But let's see. Pride, pray, queers for Palestine float. I can't. I can't. I can't even find a queers for Palestine float in the news right now. So I don't know. Brooks says pride things looking kind of gay. Super gay. It's kind of I'm fun. just. I am I I'm actually going to just be incredulous to this. I've I've stopped believing anything like this when I hear it because it's like every time I've he, like he's apparently apparently David Pakman by the way whose job and primary source of income is is outrageous like news of public interest around things like the election and 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 God, I mean and why I wish gender politics had... and and like Israel Palestine didn't didn't take a photo of this. Well, I mean, if he probably didn't have a device on him that takes, <laughs> that takes video. Like I, I can't. Um, like, did he just lie? Like I can't. He can't. But, but where he does he can, live right now? But he can. I've got to. I've got to know. I mean, he <sighs> can. Where does he live right now that we would be able to be like? Because it said, 
Massachusetts, I, I, if I remember, it's Boston, I thought. Oh, he's Argentinian. I didn't know that. Let's see. Yeah, Ash Ashkenazi Argentinian. Uh, where is David Pakman's studio? Massachusetts. So it's got to be. It's got to be Boston Pride. That's that's a big one too. That is not a small one. A few people would have seen this, but again, people don't have devices to record things anymore. Damn shame. Maybe someday they'll invent one. Uh, look, there's no, there's no news of this. I'm looking at video of it. I'm seeing like there this, was this, this is the kind the of queers for Palestine interrupted the the thing in Boston. Okay, let's see. Queers for Palestine, Boston Pride float. Uh, Anti-Semitism, Boston Pride. I'm not seeing anything. There's literally nothing. Like, but this is a. He, he's not just saying like he saw a sign. He's not saying he saw. He's saying he, a, saw, he saw a float, like a giant puppets, ass. He saw the, the Trojan. Fucking... He saw the Trojan horse with Jewish bankers on the side. Like, what? I don't. I, I just I I don't believe him. There's no there there'd be something that makes no sense. It makes no sense first of all because if that was the case, wouldn't wouldn't he be reporting on this? This is like his thing. Him being there for that is like a big deal. It's like hey, I'm David Pakman at the Boston Pride Parade, and look over there, queers for Palestine have Jewish anti-Jewish stereotypes on their on their giant ass float in front of everybody and everybody's just cool with it. That'd be like a big deal. Like, no, this is the kind of thing that you'd never hear the end of. We, we, we it'd be talked about everywhere. We're like, what, what do you mean? <coughs> what do you mean? Progressives aren't dealing with the anti-Semitism problem. Look at the float they had at Boston pride. Like I, that, that'd be, that'd be a, that'd be a tough one. I am going to now go through the entire fucking parade. I'm I'm now going to find out. I found a three and a half hour live stream. I'm going to do this in the background. I'm going to fucking find the goddamn float. Is there? Did David Pakman uh, stream his visit to the parade? He did not. But all of these people, I'm I'm watching literally everything go through right now. Like the entire Pride Parade in Boston in 2024. Hey, are there any photos of David Pakman at Boston Pride? <laughs> oh, f did he? That's even... actually a really good question. Uh, it was about it was three weeks ago um, on Pride. I don't, I don't so see anything when I Google it. I'll be upset if it's not Boston. That'll be like I, I've um, just spent. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Anti-Israel agitators destroy floats at New York Pride Parade block parade route. That's not they destroyed floats, but I'm looking for a float. He said there was a float. They said they vandalized it? floats. Did they? Did they yeah, add? This, did they add this, Jew, so, Jewish puppets well, you just to got the sent float? Is what happened everywhere. Queers yeah. for Palestine interrupted and had chants and everything. I am unaware of a single city that actually had a Queers for Palestine fly float, because uh, that would mean that they were accepted into the parade. And again, parades are banks. The floats are banks. Here's, a, like, for example, I'm looking at the Sephora group. Sephora. Uh -huh. this, is, this is not, Pride is, like, the most commercial fucking thing there is right now. Like, there's the Lay's Chips float. Like, <laughs> this is, this is, oh, right behind it is the, is the, yeah, there's Lay's Chips and then there's anti-Jewish puppets. There we go. That's it. That's it. They, they did. It didn't happen. I'm going to say bullshit at this point. And let's see if it's not Boston, which again, I thought, I think that's where Pacman. That's my understanding is that's where Pacman lives. And hundred percent. I just looked through 2024 Boston. So yeah. Yeah. He's not even Fox is covering this apparently. So it, it's gotta be a lie. It's just gotta be a, he just made that up. Which is, uh, which is a honestly, stupid thing to do. Like why? It's a stupid thing, but I'm also, uh, look, I don't think highly of Pacman as a human being in any capacity i don't feel like he's ever been the type i would presume would do that though uh his channels run into hard times maybe like uh, why, why has he got brianna Wu? he works in new york city but new york city definitely didn't have a queers for palestine float 
Like that's one I know. A queer for they Palestine got... float with the exact type of representation on it that would make it the most talked about float. Period. Like period. Like that. That's why I'm confused because this is the kind of thing that there is no way in hell wouldn't be the subject of say a wick panel, <laughs> right? Like this. This is the kind of thing that people like fasten. Oh, on. if he's in if he's in Northampton, okay, maybe a little different. Oh that's, really? There's if he didn't make it because that's. That's like the, the snooty asshole area of Massachusetts, which is saying something, because Massachusetts is kind of that. But okay. Boston's pretty cool. All right, so let's do what are you What are you responding Pride. to? I have no idea what that was. I thought you were going to say, like, oh, you, you found a... I'm, I, am, I am doing my thing. I thought you were saying you found a, you found a float in... Nope, not yet. Okay. I'm getting there. Someone in chat mentioned it, so I went and searched, and it seems like this is actually where he is but i'm trying to find the larger full pride thing so let's find out what we can do yeah i, I don't i don't know what's happening like there's nothing here that's like even slightly accurate to that statement as far as i can tell like i'm looking through i've got photos of this whole thing and there is it is not a large parade this is i'm not seeing a single float that is of course for palatine there's a there's a lovely man with a speedo and that's the entire that's there's it's not there either so no this is i wonderful q community i've been doing it 18 years on this show it's it's making me feel pushed out and i don't know that they want me so Stop maybe stories, to talk buddy. a little bit about this identity thing that brian is bringing up does anyone on the panel worry that there is a way brianna called it a, a, a reduction in size of who gets to be in the progressive movement some call it litmus tests some call it use of identity politics is anybody on the panel concerned about that other than brianna i mean i i wouldn't even some of its litmus tests and some of it's just targets you know if someone doesn't fall in line with a specific thing that a leader or a group says you're you're on the enemies list without any real understanding of what might be happening behind the scenes. I mean, this has happened with countless people who've been erased, canceled, whatever, because they made one comment or did this, or it was a misinterpretation. And then there's actual litmus tests. But what I'm concerned, you know, this dynamic that we're talking about right now is exactly what the strategy is to take two very, you know, unique arguments. I'm not saying that it's radical because there's perspectives all over the place on these issues. My partner's Jewish. We've had these conversations, very tense conversations over the last, you know, nine, 10 months about this. Incredibly tense conversations, what is, frankly. Dude, and, you know, I like just mute it and like zoom in on Brian, bro, zoom in on Woo and just like put it on like fast forward for like, I don't know, two straight minutes. Like I, I, what is happening? Is she dying? Like. It's like, it's, it's like. Oh. It younger falls for it. Doesn't know that that's anti-Semitic. Doesn't know the history says the wrong word. Mm -hmm. And then the people who just straight up, you know, are anti-Semitic for sure, but maybe aren't on the, on the left. It's complicated is what I'm saying, is we can't just put everybody in one bay, you know, one spot and the other spot and- Also, and like, I, I can't stress enough, like, it's so weird. Like, look, look at this, okay? So, this is what Brianna Wu looks like, okay? Not shaming her, she looks, she looks normal for her age. She's like, she's like in her mid-40s, she looks like a woman in her 40s, okay? What is this? What is this? Like, it's it's weird. And also, if I may, just really quick. Yeah. Notice how we have, I mean, to me, we have two professionals who are maintaining eye contact and looking at the camera and doing what they need to to make sure their points are coming across. Because, see, if I'm doing this, then the whole time you don't know if I'm even paying attention. But if I'm... Hmm. Hmm. Yes. Yes, Sunday. Yeah. It's... They, they know what they're doing and you okay. can do this. It just but, takes practice. It's but, hard to do because the camera is a circle. It's empty. It's easy to get distracted, but you need to do it. But imagine you don't know anything and you have three monitors and you've got somebody who's like just shooting you stuff. And he's probably some dumb fuck like Dev from Shurfat Otaku. And uh, 
Oh, do you and, think and she has people writing her oh right my, now? Hundred percent. She has no idea what the fuck she's doing. But in, in addition to this, like, I, like I, I think that Maybe. there's the other additional factor where I strongly suspect that what we're seeing right now is certainly augmented by AI. So I think, I think, like, an additional factor here is a lot of the twitchiness. It's like, it's like the, those Weibo music things is what's going on. Like, I don't think she's, I don't think we're, we're seeing a whole lot of woo here because she doesn't do that in actual conversations. When you see her in actual conversations, she's like, she'll do this a lot. She'll nod a lot and she'll look straight into the camera. She doesn't do this. It's very weird to watch everything that's happening. Yeah. I don't, I don't get it. Be reductionist about this. You know, I have learned so much in the last nine months from my partner and dear friends about being a progressive Jew and what it means. And also the history of even the more progressive Jewish organizations and what their backgrounds are historically. I mean, Claudia, you brought this up. Movements have complicated histories. I've also learned about how foreign influence campaigns are absolutely weaponizing this debate right now. That's and right. now they want it to be not complicated. They want it to be, you're either this or you're this because it's easy to move people that way. But this is why this conversation is, I think, really helpful and uncomfortable <laughs> at times. Um, it, you're getting into the weeds, David. And, and you know, I think that's powerful. But, like, we as progressives also have a responsibility. Pro-Palestine progressives have a responsibility to understand the history of anti-Semitism, just as, you know, I think many Jewish activists have to have an understanding of the oppression that other communities have faced and how they've always been pitted against each other. And, you know, that's... Mm -hmm on on for at this point 70 years it's a great way claudia to if you had to I, assess right or go ahead sorry go ahead no i was going to say that i agree with a lot of what Noliki just mentioned in terms of like identity politics i'm not a fan of identity politics um look at the quality of commentary goes up directly in proportion as how bad their audio is so you know she's a real leftist i feel like in so many different ways you know she's a real politics, leftist by hating identity politics just saying mm -hmm. just letting you know mm -hmm our construction of mm. academia which is brianna made her career on identity politics literally nothing oh, yeah. else i know is basically also connected to many other types of funding and it sips it has sipped in to movement to categorize and fragment so that's my understanding of it um however i say that and i also say that it is important to center and to be able to know as you mentioned the histories of historically marginalized communities and find a certain level of commonality as we potentially can to be able to form these coalitions. But it does take very difficult conversations and the ability to be able to like have a certain level of compassion, like in terms of the anti-Semitic reality, the reality of many Jewish people and David, you know, you, you could speak to it more than anyone else here. Um, there is huge amounts of suffering through generations but we cannot deny the suffering of the palestinian people either and so we need to have that conversation and it's uncomfortable we need to have a conversation about the role of the united states not only in palestine but also in africa also in in, in asia also in latin america i'm caribbean the united states has backed many different occupations in countries from where I come from. And so these are things that we need to know because if we want to have an informed, an informed sense of what actually happens and how our money, taxpayers' money who, that could be invested here to deal with the issues of healthcare, to deal with- I'm just, I'm just imagining, I'm sorry, someone just joked, okay, but the puppets, Claudia. Just, <laughs> I'm, I'm not gonna lie, like when, when he said that, you know what came to mind? You know that, you know that, you know that scene in, uh, in Shrek One, where he they go to they they arrive at Duloc and there's that puppet show, that automated one. Mm -hmm. I, I expected I, that that's the image that was in my head, just a float with just a row of those, and they're all just like Merchant of Venice caricatures on the side. Like that's I, I'm imagining Punch and Judy. That's what I'm thinking. He did is in his head. He's like, oh, they have Punch and Judy. Uh, in Punch and Judy, um, they might have had even Punch and Judy actual puppets, which are still made and sort of used generally. I don't know what Punch and, and Judy he, is, Kelly. Google it. Um, oh, it's a puppet show from my parents' era about spousal abuse being hilarious. Oh, it's uh, 
I see. I see what you mean. Like if you kid, if kids don't know Punch and Judy, it's fine. But it was about the hilariousness of. <laughs> Do you think that's what you saw? I mean, did you see me? Those there? puppets are everywhere. Those puppets are everywhere. It's a thing, uh, and it, it exists. It's European. Yeah, it's a it's a French thing. Someone chats that like it's it's more familiar over in France, but like. I don't I like look, I, like Punch and Judy dolls or puppets are things and they have big old noses and David's uh, dumb. You think you think you saw some of those, but he said a float specifically. You didn't see any that on a float. Hey, I, 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 he didn't see anything like I'm, I don't even anything. frankly, even even if that was on a float, like people would point it out. Like really, like from what we've seen, like the like there's there's no there, there are no standards here. No one's going in the background now. No, they'll never take us seriously again. We can't. No, nah, he's just making shit up. It's bullshit. The issues of housing to deal with the multi levels of crises that we experience and how those are being divested into doing all sorts of things across the globe. We need to have a sense of history. And that is all I'm saying. I think identity politics it's a historically, amazing well, thing. at least for the last 10 years. There's a lot of people that don't. Well, she just activated Wu's trap card because Brianna Wu just learned about pogroms this year. Find their space in movement. There's a lot of people that feel they are canceled. They are shunned out. Um, not only on the uh, on the identities of gender or the identity of race, but also the identity of, of age. His mouth where is they, so big. Some people may feel that older folks have nothing to bring into the I table. Feel like, because I feel this like new there's going to be a cruel joke where, like, we're going to make these comments, and she's. it turns out she has fucking Parkinson's. See? You know, you know what will happen if Brianna was Parkinson's? I will go to church, okay? That's what will happen. Oh, uh, that's all I and can all think is does? it's going to just, this is, there's something actually wrong with her. We're going to get completely fucked by making these jokes. Well, no, because she deserves it. Probably It's true. weakened Probably movements. True. And so we need to find ways of strengthening movements, but we also need to be able to touch grass, and we also need to be able to have a sense of history. As we Can start I entering the last chapter of the conversation, <laughs> I would love to go, maybe we'll go left to right as, as I see the three of you. Brianna, feel free to react to anything that's just been said that you haven't yet been able to react to, but yes. also in thinking about the last element of this, what do you think the progressive movement should absolutely not do over the next three to five years if the goal is to actually get some wins and gain some power? So that's such a good question. You know, Claudia, I hope at some point we can go out and get some coffee or something. I don't want this. Uh -huh. I, I feel like I'm disagreeing with you more than I want to today. So I apologize about that in advance. I don't think she really wants to do that. She ain't going to do that, bitch. But um, it kind of leads into David's questions. I want to like propose a counter uh, like perspective to what you just said. Yeah, you're talking about the United States foreign policy and, you know, talking about like this is something that progressives need to really get involved with and make it a, a core value, right? I really disagree with this. Um, you know, I think that, you know, Nomiki was talking about this uh, foreign interference that has uh, really- Look at her, look at her tongue when she's speaking up close. Uh, uh, here's a, here's a lighting note. If you wear glasses, yeah. don't have your light at eye level. It's a thing that a lot of people don't understand about how reflections work. Uh, if your light should be at this, here's, here's eye level for me to the camera. My light up there, light up there. You can see, you can actually see where the shot, it's important. Uh, when I put glasses on, you won't be able to necessarily see the light because of that. It's because if you set it up and you wear glasses, you should have just the look of well, now, now you look like a glasses. Victorian toy maker. Oh, these are great glasses. They're great glasses. It's it's but but it's either Victor, it's either you just finished building Pinocchio and wishing upon a star, or uh, you are asking Fraulein for her papers. I have these, and then I have my uh, um, I call them my Trotsky glasses. Um, so it's, it's either depends on the mood, depends on the mood. They're good luck. They suit you. Thank you policy and you know talking out like this is something that progressives need to really get involved with and make it a, a core value right i really disagree like, like, look this is bothering me so much just just look very closely at her tongue when she's speaking which i know sounds weird 
but it, it blends into her lip in the weirdest said, way. Yeah, you're talking about the United States foreign policy and, you know, talking like about it, like this is something that progressives it becomes need her to lip. really get involved with it's not her and tongue. make it I know. a core value, right? I really disagree with this. Um, like it just, it just, it just flexed impossibly. Yeah. yeah. You know, I, no, she's a lizard actually. That's what, that's what it is think that, you know, Nomiki was talking about this uh, foreign interference that has uh, really crept in and made it difficult for us to get our message out with bots, something I agree with. And I think part of this is this anti-Western, anti-American bias has unfortunately seeped in and come to be a, a core part of the progressive movement. If she was using a filter, the bright light's actually clever because what it does is it degrades the quality of the image overall so that you don't notice the imperfections that occur because of the filter. Which I think is kind of what she's doing. And I was 100% against the Iraq war. Uh, that was how I got my start in American politics uh, and progressive politics. But at the same time... <laughs> Important caveat, because her actual start in politics was uh, interning for a segregationist. I don't think progressives have ever given Obama credit for, uh, you know, the fight against ISIS and the good things we did with that. I think that, you know, when you're seeing this uh, operation to stop Houthis from attacking you know, union workers on shipping vessels and just make sure our global supply chain is, is operating normally, I don't think that we see, uh, you know, I think progressives are on the wrong side of this. So, David, to come back to your question, like, what do progressives fundamentally need to not do in the next five years. This is my core message. Progressives have a much, much, much harder job than Republicans or Democrats do. Because Which is why I've decided to not do it. It's the opposite, you stupid moron. God damn it. We want really big structural change. We want things like healthcare reform. We want uh, you know, real structural reform to racism in this country. And the only way we can do that is by getting this really broad buy-in from the right and the left and normal people, normal working class God people. God damn it. And Claudia I think wants to fucking really punch your face right now. core component of that is we've got- She can't do that because Brianna's face would literally come off like, like the- uh... You don't think it would wrap around you like silly putty? No, no, no. It would. It would come off like, um, you know, you know, like that weird sort of like goopy paste they use for flesh in like '80s horror films. It comes off like that. For just the, the they live alien behind it. Got to exile this anti-American, anti-West sentiment here. I think America is a really fantastic country. I'm proud to live here. I'm proud of my friends that serve in the armed forces. You interned for a racial segregationist lady. Yeah, I think when we talk about America, like it's this colonialist evil empire, I think we are driving away the normal people that we fundamentally need to bring into our fold. So we can have a criticism of American foreign policy. And I will Why is Sunday platforming Trotsky's grandchild? This, this, this is Rasputin, clearly. What do you mean Trotsky's grandchild? What's wrong with you? No, no, I don't. My, my Trotsky glasses. One second. One moment. These are my Trotsky's. always help lead that dis discussion, but I'm tired of talking out our own country like it's the enemy. It's not America. It's one of the very best countries in the world, and we should be proud of it. Claudia, let me go to you now. Who are you responding to, Bree? What are you responding to? Next, then we'll go to Nomiki. What, what do you think that the progressive movement needs to avoid over the next three to five years if the goal is to uh, get some wins? Can I, also oh, I like how literally her entire spiel was... The, the, the progressive movement needs to be exactly like the movement that propelled George Bush to power. But like literally exactly, like with no with no qualitative differences either. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. I don't I don't I don't think that saying American is also monolithic. I don't think it's like all Americans are the same. There are very, very huge differences. Um and as, and as someone, for example, like Trent Lott would be able to point out very easily who Brianna Boone turned for. There is actually a divide, a divide between those who own it all and those who don't have anything. And so I, I think that that's important to be mentioned because being anti-war or being anti-imperialist for that matter doesn't mean that you are anti-American. Actually, there there is a history, a long history of Americans who love America and who've loved and written amazing things 
who are anti-imperialist. So I just want to share that. And so I would really welcome a coffee, especially since I love coffee with you at any point. <laughs> so if great. I find myself in Massachusetts, I will- If that is recorded, that will be amazing. I would love to see a follow-up with this. That would be so good. This is this is a, a very good panel between two women and two zombies. Definitely make sure to look out for you because I think there is a lot of confusion. Um, again, Americans come in many different sizes, in many different colors, and with many different realities and experiences, um, even of migration, even of those who who have centuries of and generations of of being here who are designated to be in the most dire and terrible conditions. Um, in terms of what we shouldn't do, I want to go back to how I started. I said I, I come into the space as an organizer from the grassroots. Um, I am not part of the Democratic Party. I am part of the left that is a traditional left in this country. Um, and I think in terms of what we should oh, not- an old school leftist from 2015 do there's many things that we shouldn't do but i i could humbly share what i there think there was no left do. before gamergate I, sorry i think that there's a dire need to have more conversations like this at all levels at all levels i think that there is a huge necessity to be able to take over the question of education in our community to be able to politicize and actually make meaning of the moment in which we're in. There's a lot of people that are asking many questions that neither the Democrats or the Republicans have actual answers to. Um, a lot of people left the debate <laughs> um, with a sense of despair, a sense of doom, because it shows again, just how deep the political crisis and the crisis of legitimacy of the ruling class is in this country. And so there is a need to be able to engage in educational conversations where we are able to shape some sort of analysis that is collective. And the other aspect of it, I think that we need to be able to invest a lot of time outside of, you know, outside of our comfort spaces. So electoral politics is one piece, but there's no way politics can actually be moved without social movements, people that are outside of these parties, people that are actually doing the work, people that are actually mobilizing, that are educating, that are agitating, there's time and space that needs to be invested in that space. Because for as long as we think that the ones that should be having some sort of influence are those who have money, this country is gonna continue to go backwards and more towards, towards the right. No, Mickey, your thoughts, I'll give you the same prompt. What, what should progressives avoid doing uh, in order to get some wins? Uh, maybe spend a little less time online. <laughs> <laughs> less time on X, right? Yes. I mean, but really, it's 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 not that, you know, on one hand, yes, the majority of working people out there who we want to bring into our movement um, that were probably part of our movement a few years ago, you know, multi-generational, multi-racial, multi-economic, uh, I guess, working people were part, was the Bernie Sanders campaign of 2016. We remember it, it was historic. Um, and we wanted it to grow and it should have grown. But simultaneously, we do have this online infrastructure that is very influential. It's very noisy and it does steer things. It is not everybody. It is nowhere near everybody. It's nowhere near a small portion, but it does steer things. It steers conversation. It steers think pieces. It steers the newspapers. It steers, you know, uh, how money is being poured into politics. Great examples of Jamal Bowman race. I mean, a lot of these narratives, these fights are being established in this, this very um, unequal, uh, algorithmic <laughs> universe that we're talking about. It's not everything, but it is a lot. So, you know, maybe not take everything you see online at face value. Um, there's a lot of operations that go behind that. You know, as someone who's worked on campaigns, yeah, yeah, influencers out there, you have surrogates, you have like group chats, and there's a million other things. So that's just one aspect of it. Um, I'm, I think what I find really valuable about this conversation is that we've talked about how infrastructure works in different organizations. We've talked about how fundraising works. We've talked about how electoral politics works, we've talked about history, and we've talked about touching the grass. And I think there's a perfect formula for understanding and moving forward 
as progressive individuals to, to work critically and think critically. And you kind of need to have a little bit of all of that, of a deeper understanding of your history, the methods that have hurt our progressive movements in the past and killed them, and the methods they're using moving forward. I think it's important for us to go out there and do the work organizing. No offense, not you, David, I've known you for years, but there's a whole lot of podcasters out there who've never stepped one foot on any campaign, whether it's an issue-based campaign of movement organizing or actual electoral politics, and yet they're the end-all, be-all deciders of what's right and wrong. Um, that's just not, you know, you need to do the work. And it doesn't mean that if you don't have time to do the work, you can't be part of the movement. Everybody has a role, but also understanding how these movements operate and how to communicate with voters. I mean, one thing I think all of us have, dis well, have discussed here is fine. there are people out there who feel totally left out of the community, whose needs and concerns are not being addressed, whose pain is not being felt, whether you agree with it or not, that we need to understand. And we learn to understand by having conversations. We learn to understand by going out there and doing the work in community and volunteering. You know, showing up and protesting is one thing, and that's great, showing up on the streets. But doing the deep organizing is where you're, it's like your DNA sh day shifts as, as a movement worker. Suddenly you go on, you see the chatter, and you're like, this is so meaningless compared to the elderly woman that I met with, Olga, in Puerto Rico, whose house, whose roof was ripped off at 78, in Hurricane Maria, still isn't there from Hurricane Fiona, and now is being priced out of her community. Do you think she cares about what's happening with Brianna Joy Gray and Glenn Greenwald online? No. <laughs> she cares about whether or not she's going to be able to get the FEMA <laughs> money under Joe Biden, whether or not she's going to be able to find new housing, given the fact that properties have gone up so much on the island. And this is happening in communities across the country. These are our, this is our movement. And we need to get down on the ground and real with what the implications are of these conversations we're having in this theoretical like web space. It has real consequences. And, you know, this presidential election, as, as uncomfortable as it is, there are real consequences if you do stand, if you don't do anything. We may not like That's it. That's for sure. That's for sure. Yeah. Listen, we are at the end of our time. Brianna, Claudia, Nomiki, so great to see you and really appreciate your time and your insights. <sighs> Claudia just saw a puppy, I think. I don't know what that face is. <sighs> I think it's too late for Lethal Company. I'm going to go to bed. It's very late for Lethal Company. Hold on for two seconds, though. I want to try a thing because I'm fascinated by what things could be. Are you setting up AI? Mm hmm. It's not. That's okay. I'll do it next time. I'll make myself really pretty. But you're pretty already, Brooks. No, I found a program that actually allows you to fully narrow your face, your eyes, change your cheekbones. Like, it's really particular. It's fascinating, actually. Like, it's actually very well done, generally speaking. It made me very fucking super gaunt just now, but hey, what oh. can I say? narrowing my face there you go here you go sunday oh oh let's see hang on hang on wait gotta do this you gotta do the share screen thing sorry oh uh okay show me uh because it's it's subtle it's actually really kind of nice fascinating there goes my chin pull everything in and it's uh oh my god it's, fair, it's fairly aware of what's happening but your mouth is doing the exact same thing hers is doing. Like it's, it's, oh, yeah. it's, it's lagging yeah. slightly. Try moving your tongue a little bit. See what happens. Like this one. That was unpleasant. Not... I didn't need to see that. Uh, I just fucking, I don't, I don't I feel like I'm slowly turning into, um, I mean, it's, it's kind of actually wonderful that it's able to maintain it across things. But again, you can see the cheek going in and out. Yeah. Because your beard is fucked up. No, no. It's because it doesn't know what 3D is. Let's turn my sunken shinks all the way up. That's very unpleasant. But I'm going to be honest, I don't really see any difference. Oh. 